I grew up with no siblings, and to be honest with you, my neighborhood didn't really have anybody that was close to my age when I was growing up. So I was stuck with cartoons all day, playing games by myself, and just trying to stay entertained. Well, can you imagine my joy when my cousin moves in next door to me and he's my age, so we're playing all these games now and it's amazing. So now, now that you know I have a close relationship with my cousin, let's fast forward. I'm married and all of a sudden, it was about 2 a.m. in the middle of the night, and now my 30-year-old cousin, he's grown up. So, imagine my surprise when he's knocking on the door holding his suitcase, looking like he's absolutely homeless, with something pretty crazy to tell me. I've known my cousin John for over years, which is why what he did and what I had to do has left me devastated. As a mother, it's only right I kicked him out for slapping my son. Let's start at the beginning, though, so you understand my point of view of my cousin. I was the sole child of my parents, Mark and Emily. My parents' love for me uh, never diminished. Unable to give me a brother or sister, they would feel guilty and end up showering me with gifts and love. This had worked out perfectly for me, but there were times I wish I did have a sibling to play and just share my toys with. Well, I was ten with my aunt and uncle, Lisa and Greg, moved into the house next door. It had lain dead for months and was probably crawling with dust spiders and whatnot. One day, when my parents came home and gave me the news that my aunt and uncle were moving next door and that they had a son my age, I was overjoyed. I'd finally have a playmate and would no longer have to watch endless hours of cartoons on television or play games alone. I wanted to have a good relationship with both him and his parents, and just make an offer to my mom and dad that I would love to help my aunt and uncle move into their house. And I could lend a helping hand cleaning it. You know, even though <laughs> bugs disgust me. My parents were happy for me to be responsible, and my aunt and uncle happily accepted the offer. There's a lot of chaos on the day of the move-in. Trucks with their luggage and furniture blocked half the pavement, and people swarmed the house. There was a frenzy of people moving in and out of the house, and I rushed past the legs of adults in hopes of finding my cousin and getting to know him. Before I could say so, my aunt, Lisa, had caught me by the arm, and I had told her I would help out with the dusting, and she was here to collect. With a look of dismay, I set on dusting the house, reaching as far as I could. I felt a tap on my shoulder and turned around to meet the gaze of a rather tall, lanky kid. He grinned at me as I smiled back. He introduced himself as John and asked why I was dusting his house. I too wondered the same as John pulled me away to his room to show me his toys. We sat there in the dusty room, playing with his toy trucks, cars, trains, and transformers until my parents came to get me for dinner. By dinner, my parents had helped my aunt and uncle set up the whole house, and it was sparkling clean. Left for John's room. I helped John clean his room, and we had a hot piping dinner along with ice cream for dessert. Over the next few days, John and I had become great friends. We would spend all the time playing or watching TV and discussing stuff. You see... John, too, was, um, well, a lone kid, and being in a new place on top of that meant he was anxious most of the time. John enrolled in the same school I was in, and that's when things started to change. He was a grade, or two, higher than me, and soon made new friends. I was once again sidelined and just found myself doing the stuff I used to do alone. I would visit his home once in a while, though, as we were still good friends. I was 14 or 15 when my aunt asked me to come over more often, as she said she would feel lonely all the time. I had not realized it then, but that had been a small trick of hers. She would invite me over to talk while she did chores. She would ask me to help around and whine about how her old back was hurting, and how her son did not do any good. I started helping around doing chores for my aunt, and... John would get home from school and mess up the home, 
just throwing his clothes all over the place. Lisa would not say a word. I eventually realized my aunt had just been using me to pick up after her lazy son, so I stopped going over on a regular basis. Fast forward to my college days. I met my husband, Jacob, while I was on a college trip to France. Jacob had approached me as he thought me, well, to be pretty, and at the time I quite liked the attention as I grew up believing I had just basic features. I had to come back to finish my education, and Jacob applied to shift of my city. Right after graduation, I got married to Jacob, and we were blessed with a baby boy, Davis, after his grandfather. Things had been going well for me. Jacob worked full-time to fend for our family, while I stayed home taking care of our baby. I would work on remote projects and help with the extra income for luxuries such as vacations abroad. But one day... My small, happy world came to an end. I sat on the sofa and my laptop on the couch handle with little baby Davis fast asleep in my lap. I had a mind to get up and put him to bed and in turn stretch my legs. Just as Davis's head touches the pillow, the phone rings in the background and I rush to get it. So, as not to wake Davis up, he had both kept me and Jacob up all night with his cries and the person speaking on the other end spoke words I had only wished I would not hear for a long time. The police officer said there's been an accident and I should come to the site so he could explain it better. I tried to drown out the noise of Davis crying of the traffic, of the construction men at work trying to lift the rubble that had just collapsed. Apparently, there had been an accident with the building under construction and beside the office building my husband worked in collapsing onto their small office. Numerous, dead, and many injured. Jacob's death left me devastated by the sudden loss of a partner and a lover. I was forced to grieve him alone, but was also reminded I had to stay strong and find a job to take care of my son. The following year or so had been really difficult, and I ended up leaving Davis with my parents, and until I got settled at work and found a suitable job. I had felt guilty for doing so, but was assured by my mom and dad that it was no big deal, and in their retirement age, they would love to play around with a kid. I got a job as a secretary and rented an apartment for me and my son. This only made me miss Jacob even more and miss how life used to be, however, I was soon focused on my job and raising Davis and had little to no time to myself. I had moved to a different city than my parents after getting married to Jacob. It had been ages since I'd hear from my aunt, uncle, or John, and I had totally forgotten them at this point, up until a month ago, when John showed up at my door. A knock on the door in the dead of night startled me, and I wondered who it could be. I armed myself with a knife as I went to open it. John who was now unrecognizable with the grown and rather shabby beard and wrinkles that exhibited aging, stood there with his bags in his hand, looking like he had just climbed a mountain. Being courteous, I asked him to please come inside. As soon as he got in, he settled on the couch, and John began to cry. I was pretty sure I've never seen him cry, and to have a 30-something-year-old grown man bawling like a baby on your couch in the middle of the night had only made me feel a bit weird. When he had calmed down, I offered him refreshments and asked if he was okay. John indulged me with this story. After I moved away, things only seemed to get worse for him and his family. He had applied to multiple colleges and was turned away due to his lacking of grades. I remember that John had never been much of a student and despised studying... I remember him being in the same grade as me at some point, and after trying and failing to get into college, he instead applied for a job as a mechanic and worked hours to earn menial pay. He would soon get married and divorced within the same year. Loans, debts to be paid, aging mother and father to be looked after, and alimony were just some of the things that burdened him when one fine day, his manager decided to fire him. Having nowhere to go and just a few cents in his pocket, he called his mother up 
Oh, in turn gave him my address, which he had gotten from my mom. Turns out we were in the same city, and with no money to buy a ticket, he decided, heck, he'll just show up at my place and stay put until he got himself out of this mess that life has put him in. I agreed, as John had been a good friend of mine and did not mind having my cousin over to keep me company and just help get back on his feet. I knew he'd need a day or two of comfort and good food before he set out into the world again. Davis had not been too happy with the new guest. He did not despise John, but had sent something off about him. I thought nothing of it and did not heed his words. Ah, it had not even been a week, and I was reminded of the old days, when I was fifteen and picking up after John. I did his chores for him, did his laundry, washed the dishes, etc., while well, all John did was have his tea, watch football, and sleep most of the days. In a week or so, John claimed that he found a job, but he would not be able to rent a place with the pay and was hoping he could stay a few more weeks until, well, he could save up some rent. I agreed without much thought as he would soon move out. My work had only become more hectic and I was rarely home to observe what was going on. During the time that I was home, John would be watching football, having beers, making me wonder if he even left to work at all. I had only gotten to know the truth from Davis about what had been happening at my house. Before I left for work, I asked John to take care of a few chores around the house, along with babysitting Davis. And his job had only been till noon while my job ended in the late evening. John complied, and I felt good in thinking that my cousin had indeed changed. But that was not the case. According to Davis, my cousin would go out, in the name of work, for an hour or two and would come back home with a crate of beer. And by the way, the chores I had assigned him, he made Davis do it and he would walk around commanding him and giving lectures, and had something not been up to mark. Davis hated being left alone with John, as he was a different man in my presence. I wanted to speak to John about it, but he only had a week left until I presumed he saved enough to rent himself a place. If he did not buy all those beers, he could have used the money to rent himself a place by now, but... I learned that Uncle Greg was the one paying for them, in order for John to keep his sanity. Yesterday, I was at work and left early as I had to be at an important meeting. I informed Davis I would be running late and told him to call if something happened or if John gives him a hard time. John had bought breakfast for the both of them, along with some beer and afterward, John asked Davis to do the dishes, which was John's task. Davis refused to do so, and John started his usual lecturing. And Davis instead ignored him and put on his earphones to listen to music when suddenly... Both his phone and headphones were snatched away, and he was met with a tight slap to the cheek. Well, I had never in my life, not even once, ever thought of hitting my son, not to discipline him. And to think of John slapping him when he was a guest at my house is only making my blood boil. After slapping him, John proceeded to confiscate David's other devices and sent him to his room, locking it behind him. I found it unusual when my calls on the telephone had no answer. I sensed something terrible had happened and made up my mind to get home early. As soon as I got home, it was quiet. Davis is an enthusiastic kid who always ran about whenever I returned home from work, engulfing me in hugs. But now, he was nowhere to be seen. I saw John sitting on the couch watching football and drinking beers as usual. I walked to my son's room and found it locked from the outside, and I opened it to find Davis curled up in a ball on the floor. I picked him up and noticed that he had been crying, and I noticed a giant bruise on his cheek. Davis hugged me back and cried into my shoulder as he told me how John had slapped him for not doing the dishes. When I confronted John, he blamed Davis for being a brat and an idiot. 
he also blamed me for not teaching manners to my son. This had me enraged. I picked up all his things and threw them out and told him to leave. Not long after, I put Davis to bed and I get a call from my aunt. Both Lisa and Greg started screaming at me for making John homeless. They said I should have been a good host and not made my guests do chores and blamed it all on me. It was the middle of the night when I kicked John out to the streets and did not think much of it, to be honest. Lisa and Greg's words still rang in my ears when they said I could have waited until morning to kick him out. So I'm asking you guys this. Am I the a-hole for removing my cousin from the house after he slapped my son for not doing chores for my cousin? What's up everybody? Mr. Reddito here. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Oh man, what's going on with OP's cousin? I mean, the nerve. Anyways, there's two updates for this story. If you guys are new to the channel, take a second, hit that subscribe button. It really helps support me and I appreciate that. And here's your first update. It's barely been a week to be honest. And John had retaliated to me kicking him out. The next day, John shows up with a bat swinging in his hand. He created a ruckus outside my apartment as he started screaming profanities at me and Davis. I just watched him through the window. And, well, it was scary as he swung the bat and hit my car with it, breaking a window or two. I flinched every time he hit it. After he was done, John showed no sign of leaving the place and was still standing swinging the bat, and as time passed, my anxiety rose, and I was just scared for my and Davis's safety. I picked up the phone and dialed emergency and complained of my cousin and his threatening demeanor. It had barely been ten minutes or so when the police showed up with sirens blaring. I watched as they took John away in handcuffs. I only came out to speak to them after he was put in the car. They took a formal complaint and went about their way. With John handcuffed in the back of the car, I let out a sigh of relief, I'll tell ya. Had I let him stay any longer or had they not arrived as soon as they did, I could only imagine how he would have hurt me and my son. I enjoyed the peace that followed John's arrest, but it was not for long as word traveled at the speed of light. The whole family got to know of John's arrest and started inquiring about more details regarding his arrest. I called Mark and Emily to let them know all of what just happened. They too agreed my actions of kicking John out after he basically abused my son were correct, and they would have done the same had they been in my shoes. I would do it all over again if I had to. I've been getting calls from Lisa and Greg, who threatened me for getting John arrested. They told me how they were getting a plane ticket to my city soon and would have him out on bail. The threats did seem a little baseless, but were fueled by anger they felt towards me so anything's possible. I called Mark and Emily, asking if they could fly over also, since I did not feel safe alone after threats from others. I've been getting calls from relatives I did not even know existed until now. They've been calling and telling me about how I got John arrested because he refused to do chores at my place. According to them, Lisa had told them how John had stood up against me and I kicked him out, an innocent man. Knowing he might as well be homeless and when John retaliated, I lied about his violence and got him arrested on the spot. My relatives have been texting me with quotes from God and the Bible, asking me to be a better person and pay John's bail, or to withdraw my false complaint. All the drama would be to dealt with on another day, as right now I'm focused on keeping myself and Davis safe from threatening relatives such as my cousin, uncle, and aunt. Update number two. Hey guys, a friend of John's, a childhood friend, had just called and threatened me. I've known this friend too before. His name's Finn. 
Finn was in John's grade, and I had seen him at my aunt's place a couple of times or two, where he could be found hanging out eating pizza with John. I may have passed by him in the hallways at school a couple times, and once or twice I might even have been made fun of by him. Finn was a known bully at our school. It did not help me in any way that he was John's best friend. Finn had asked me out in the final year of high school, and I declined, causing him to be enraged and spread these false rumors about how I did not want to date him because I saw him beneath me. Years later, back when Jacob had still been around, Finn contacted me on his own saying he had gotten a job in the city I was residing in and would simply like to catch up. I ignored him then and have not heard from him up until now. Finn was not a guy to be messed with, I tell ya. His threats to harm Davis made the hair on my small back stand up. I made up my mind. Mark and Emily were staying with Davis as I did not want to leave him alone in times like this and I called them to let them know. I would be coming home late. After work, I drove to the police station to have a chat with officers. Upon discussion, I found out that John had a previous violent record. One was filed by his ex-wife, who had complained of him being violent and breaking the windows to her house after she had served him with divorce papers. Another was by his previous employer after he was fired with whom John had threatened on the phone and damaged his car at night while he slept. I thanked the police for their information and told them that my aunt and uncle would be arriving any minute and handling both them and John, along with Finn, as I believe my life and Davis's might be in grave danger. The police told me they would keep an eye on both Finn and John. Well... I came home and without another word began packing our stuff. I'm on a flight back to my parents' city with Davis and my parents and I texted my boss all the details and why I would not just need to leave the city urgently. He understood and offered me a remote position of work as he did not want to lose me as an employee. I made a social media post with John's picture and the picture of my damaged vehicle recounting all that happened and told everyone of John's violent nature. I forwarded the post to all my relatives who had called or texted to tell me I was in the wrong just to tell them to be aware of John and Greg and Lisa. The post also mentioned Finn and any details I might know of him. The post, well... It went pretty viral, as more people saw and shared it. I only shudder when I think of how I had made me and Davis vulnerable to such a violent man and put us in danger by opening my house to him. It only saddens me to see what had become of the nice cousin I used to play cars with. It's been a week since John had been arrested. I hope he learned a lesson or two while locked up in jail. Oh man, this story was just absolutely wild. I felt for OP. I mean, what did she do wrong? She grew up with her cousin, somebody that was her best friend in childhood, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the night, here he is, asking for help. And not to mention, OP just went through a tragedy when she lost her husband in a workplace accident. I mean, what are the odds of that? And then, to have somebody that you trusted so much, your cousin, turn on you like this and be absolutely violent and insane. I mean, yeah, I can understand he was going through some stuff, and that can push people to some pretty crazy lengths, but showing up the next day after you get kicked out for smacking a kid and then destroying the windows of OP's vehicle with a baseball bat? <laughs> That's over the edge. But it didn't end there. The entire family, except for OP's parents, were trying to be on his side saying, Hey, OP, you should go bail him out. It's all your fault this is happening. And let's not forget about Finn, who was some crazy person, maybe more crazy than OP's cousin. But I don't know, there was a lot to this one. But for the first time in a long time, it seems like almost everyone in the comment section was agreeing with each other saying, OP, I just can't believe you had to go through that, and I'm sorry. Almost nobody was on the side of the cousin. 
Let me know your thoughts about this story, though. What would you have done? Called the police instantly like OP? That's what I would have done. But let me hear from you guys. Drop your comments directly below in the comment section. My name's Mr. Reddito. Thank you for joining me today. If you guys want more daily videos, hit that subscribe button. I'm here every single day. Check out my other channels directly underneath in the description. And remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.